Okay, now we need to actually get around to making our website and actually planning the content that's going to go onto each page. Now, what you have to do is you need to create a web page with a home page that is linked to at least two other self-created web page. So we're making a website that consists of three web pages that we created ourselves. Okay. And uh, this needs to have a title introduction. We need to have a navigation system at the end with quality information and hyperlinks. If at any point you need help with the actual HTML coding, you can consult your textbook. You are allowed to do that. Or this is also a very good website to use, W3Schools. So if you go to Learn HTML, you can see they pretty much have everything here. Basic elements, attributes, headings, paragraphs, uh, colors. Uh, for example, over here you can find the basic layout uh, to start your website. So you can use this to start your website and then work from there to create your formatting and fonts and anything else that you need to add, you should be able to find over here or in your textbook. You can use this web page to choose some nice web safe font. Please don't use the default. The default is Times New Roman. And it's really not very nice for a website because it is a serif font and it's better to use a sans serif font like I showed you earlier. Uh, I'll put the link in the description box and I'll save this file in the folder for those of you who access this offline. Now, I know one of the things that everyone finds the most difficult is to actually know what to put on these three web pages. Now, there are no marks allocated for knowing what to put on these three pages. So I'm going to make a suggestion for what you can put on these three web pages. You are in no way obliged to actually use my suggestion. And by telling you my suggestion, I'm not giving you any marks because you don't get any marks for the suggestion, but it may make your life a bit easier because then you don't need to think of what to put on these pages. So here goes. If it was me who actually had to do this, I would, for the first web page, um, the landing or home page, I would just make that my topic or uh, the or I would just have the topic in large, big, big, big letters, basically like your cover page, have the topic and um, depending on which one is uh, written better, either the abstract or the introduction. Abstract would be better because it has the conclusion as well, but if it's not written very well, then the introduction will be better. So I think maybe ask a friend uh, and ask them to read both and give you an opinion which one is written better if you're not sure which one is the best yourself. The home page needs to be big, bold, eye-catching. This is the one where you can actually have a darker background and light text, for example, where you would actually use uh, something, you know, the tags that you can use to actually create white space to have the title big and bold in the middle of the page. If you go and look at the page where we looked at uh, the web designs, let's quickly go there. If we look at this page, okay, if you look at these home pages, it's ones where you have a big title and a small bit of text just to tell you what the topic is about. Okay, something like that, or that doesn't really have text with it. Let's see, that almost, that kind of thing, this is the kind of thing that I have in mind, you know? Something like that, almost. Okay, so almost like that with a bit of a paragraph. But it doesn't have to have, you know, images necessarily. But this is the kind of place where I would probably go and look for a picture that is um, free to reuse with modification for non-commercial reuse. Okay, if you use a photo or image that you didn't create, so it's not a graph that you created, remember you have to give credit. So right at the bottom of the page, go and look if you can find a tag that you can maybe put in the footer, uh, I'm sure there is a tag to put something in the footer for HTML. 
uh, use a small font, as small as possible, and then give the URL where you found the picture to say this is where you got the background for the home page. And then the background uh, has to be similar if you use a picture, has to have a color scheme that is similar to the rest of your website. Okay, so that will actually dictate what color scheme you use for the rest of your website. When you design your websites or des your different web pages, your home page will have the color scheme in a very bold and uh, bright way. Okay, probably if you do my kind of suggested content. But the other two web pages need to have the same color scheme and, dis and the same font because users need to know that they are still on the same website. Consistency is key. You can't suddenly have different colors. You can't have different background colors. They need to know that they are on the same website. Okay, so it has to be a consistent color scheme and the different web pages need to have the same color so that whoever is using the website knows that they are still on the same website. Okay. So that's the home page or the landing page. Then for web page two, I would make that the discussion and analysis page. I don't know if I would actually call it that. I don't know. One can probably think of something better. But this is where I would put the three headings and paragraphs from the word report, but basically shortened. So uh, this section the discussion and analysis, the three headings and the paragraphs that you have underneath. So you have to shorten the paragraphs now. You can't just use it as is. It has to be shortened, maybe some bullet points, not only bullet points, but some bullet points and um, not just these large paragraphs, please. So three headings and some paragraphs. And please, um, when you're going to use this, you need to keep the citations. So when you copy the text, keep the citations exactly as it is. Um, obviously, when you paste it, it won't keep it as a field. But the fact that you have it with the surname of the author and the date in brackets behind the text is actually going to is exactly what will earn you a mark in the end. So please keep the citations. You have to have citations in your final text. So keep the citations and bring that along. Um, you are not allowed to delete that. Please keep that, all right? This is also the page where you need to put in the bibliography because you have to have a bibliography. I would also suggest that you put your bibliography, that you basically separate it from your discussion and analysis with the use of a horizontal line. So put a horizontal rule, uh, or a line, between the discussion and analysis and the bibliography because there is a mark saying that you make use of horizontal lines or horizontal rules to separate the content and that way you can get that mark as well. And because we have to have bullets somewhere, this is where I would put the bullets. So I would actually go and copy the bibliography and I would put each source as a separate bullet and then we have to have hyperlinks to another source, to an external source. So we'll have hyperlinks internally between the different web pages to make a website. But we also have to have hyperlinks externally to an actual website that is not the uh, our internal web pages. So this is a great place to link to the actual websites that you used. So what I always suggest is your bibliography itself is to use the URLs in your bibliography and actually make this a clickable link. Okay, so to link to this actual page on the bibliography that you're going to put on your web page. And then for web page three, make this your finding page. So you were going to put uh, you're going to put your two to three graphs over here. As, as well as a finding and an interpretation of the graph. And you must please remember, you need to add a meaningful descriptive alt tag for every single graph, as well as the image that you put on the home page. Okay. 
if there is an alt tag missing or if the alt tag is not very descriptive for a single image, you lose the mark for alt tag. Remember the purpose of an alt tag is so that someone who is uh, who has a visual impairment that the screen reader can actually read a description for them to tell them what this picture is about. So it has to be very descriptive and actually tell them graph representing male versus female, blah, 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 whatever it actually is about. It has to be a very descriptive alt tag. Now, when you want to save your graphs to be able to use in your uh, present or in your website, I would say, please don't do screenshots uh, if at all possible. So go to your word report and right click on the graph and look if you can find there should be something that says save as picture come on right click okay let's cut it and paste it as a picture and then see save as picture okay so if you've managed to paste it as a picture then you can save it as a picture now that I have the save as picture option available I'm going to go to my pet folder and remember it has to be in the same folder as your website and then I'm going to save it as let's say graph 1 so then save and then you can use that file if you didn't manage to do that then please do a snip of the graph but without this because this is the kind of information that you need to put in in text yourself in the website. Okay.